Hey class. So this is our first week of blended learning. So some of your work is available on the computer, but if you don't have computers, it is also available on paper. This week you're doing the packet that you came home with on Friday, our last day of school. That packet is what you have to do all week and it'll count for you being here at school. You'll be marked as present. Um, let me think. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you I'm available to you. From 9 to 3, if you have any questions whatsoever, you contact me and I'll help you figure out whatever you're struggling with. Um, so this week will be a little different. We'll have some schoolwork to do. I'm looking forward to it, actually. I am here with Nancy Sorosweck in Chapter 14. That Friday, after school, I placed Hammy Rex into my locker, Dino Habitat, for the weekend. You know the drill, little buddy, I said, scratching his scaly spine. I leave a bunch of extra sandwiches for you the next two days. And then I see you bright and early on Monday morning. I unloaded ten peanut butter and jelly sandwiches from my backpack and st stacked them in the back of the locker. Hammy Rex gurgled. Things felt a lot safer since Beefer hadn't shown his face at Horace Hot Water for two whole days. Perhaps he feared the curse of the wolf. Maybe he was just too embarrassed to return. The annoying thing was, I felt kind of guilty about it. Sure, his comeuppance had gone a little far, but he deserved it, didn't he? I tried to joke about it with Dylan the day before, but she didn't laugh. I sighed. Okay, don't eat these sandwiches all in one sitting, I said, knowing Hamster Source Rex definitely would. Despite the food, the little guy seemed glum, too. He kicked a toy stegosaurus and made a kind of whining grumble as he stomped around in circles. His eyes looked moist. His tail drooped. He didn't want me to leave. That's really touching, I said. I miss you too, but I can't stay at school and you can't come home with me. Here. I pulled out a new drawing and taped it to the inside of my locker. If you get lonely, just look at this picture. It was me, but as a caveman. So it would fit in with the prehistoric decor. Look. Of course, I know that humans and dinosaurs lived millions of years apart, but Hamstersaurus Rex didn't. He glanced at the cave Sam I drew and then started gnawing my finger. For an ugly little mutant, he sure was cute. You're not making this any easier, I said. Who's not making what easier, said Martha Cherie. I slammed my locker shut. Sorry, I said. I was just, um, talking on the phone. But you don't have a phone. I was practicing for when I get one. I pantomime answering, hello? No, this isn't Ethelbert. Oh, this is a weird name. Pejorio the third. You must have the wrong number. Goodbye. I pretended to hang up. How was that? Good, but you probably should have asked what number they were trying to call, said Martha. Thanks, I said. We stared at each other for a minute. Is there something I could help you with? I said. When do you want to leave? Leave? For the Antique Doll Museum. My heart sank. That's today? Martha nodded. You know what? I'm actually feeling a little beat. Big week. Not sure if you remember, but I won Little Mr. Muscles and single-handedly defeated Beaver. I flexed. Anyway, maybe we could reschedule. I'm thinking... June of next year? Martha frowned. The ADM is closed for the whole month of June for renovations. Besides, I already had my parents cancel con conversational Portuguese and taxidermy and tap just so we could do it today. Wow, you know how to tap dance? I tried it once and it's really hard, I said, feeling guilty. Martha was right. I had promised. Actually, I'm getting a second wind, I said. Let's meet at the museum at four. No need. We can ride over together, said Martha. I brought my tandem bicycle. You brought it to school? 
I said with a sigh, the place where everyone I know is. That's, that's fantastic. I grabbed my backpack, put my head down, and followed Martha. From the office, I called my mom at work to tell her she wouldn't need to pick me up today. After a lot of questioning, I grudgingly admitted I was going somewhere with an acquaintance who happened to be a girl. My mom giggled and told us to have fun in a weird voice, and my face got all red. Seriously, calm down, mom. Thankfully, no one saw me and Martha ride off together down the street on her weird double bicycle. My newfound popularity was safe. I'm very close to finding Hamstersaurus Rex, said Martha, as we pedaled down the street. Did some new evidence come to light? I analyzed Beefer's frayed sweatpants drawstring under a microscope. It was gnawed by the same second set of pointed teeth. But that's not Hamstersaurus Rex. It's some kind of freaky lizard, right? Yes, but the tooth prints are too similar to discount, and I haven't seen any new hamster gnawing since early last week, said Martha. I'm starting to think that the Hamstersaurus Rex we knew has changed somehow. Huh? No way, I said. Here's what I think happened. Somebody got a baby crocodile and tried to keep it as a pet, but it was too hard to take care of, so they released it into the school sewer system, and then it ate Hamstersaurus Rex and went to Florida, so you don't need to worry about it anymore. The end. If lonely life were that simple, Sam, said Martha, the fact is I failed at being hamster monitor when I let Hamstersaurus Rex escape. Now it's up to me to find him. If his teeth are pointy now, who knows what else might have changed. He could even be dangerous. He's not dangerous, I said. I mean, he's just a hamster, right? Martha nodded, but she didn't seem convinced. We rode past the Smiles Corp International Headquarters. It was an ultra-modern campus of buildings, all glass and brushed metal on a hill overlooking a town. I've been there a few times with my mom, the place always creeps me out. Turns out Maple Bluff's antique doll museum was even creepier. It was housed in a run-down old mansion on an empty street near the edge of town. A faded banner out front displayed the museum's slogan, Dolls are our silent friends. Everything about the place made me feel like I was being watched. Once, I caught a faint whiff of something odd on the wind. Garlic? I glanced over my shoulder, but there was nobody there. Great, said the ticket taker, sighing as she saw us approach. Martha Cherie, the reason we can never close early on Fridays. Good afternoon, Patricia, said Martha. One child's ticket and one member. Martha held up her season pass. Of course. It was on a lanyard. I unzipped my backpack to get my admission fee, and I was very surprised to see a little pair of eyes shining back at me. What are you doing? I hissed at Hamstersaurus Rex. You hitchhiked? You should be at school. He made a little growl and waggled his stump arm and tried to look cute. No, not cute. This is a disaster. What's a disaster, said Martha. I quickly closed my backpack. Nothing. I forgot my, er, uh, admission fee. Looks like I don't have five dollars, so I can't get into the museum. Sorry, I'll just catch the bus back. Nonsense, said Martha. I've prudently saved every dollar of birthday money I've ever received. I'm happy to cover you. Martha pulled out a thick wad of bills and peeled off a five, which she placed on the counter. Patricia handed me my ticket. Inside, the ADM was even spookier. The twisting, dusty halls were deserted. It seemed like we were the only patrons, maybe ever.
This place is really informative, but it's a lot of fun too, said Martha. The exhibits start with the world's oldest dolls and each works its way forward in time. For example, this doll was made by the ancient Hittites and she pointed to a shriveled clay figure behind a glass case. Cool, I said. Do they have any, like, action figures here? Martha burst out laughing. Okay, I said, I guess not. We wound our way through the corridor after corridor of musty old dolls. Many had patching hair, missing limbs, and weird makeup on their faces. They ran the gamut from ominous to unsettling. Martha seemed happy, though. The best one is at the end, said Martha, an original 1958 Ginny Gossamer, informally known as the history's most fragile doll. She's not behind any glass or anything. You feel like you could almost reach out and touch her, except that's totally against the rules. On the second floor, we passed a security guard leaning against a wall. Good afternoon, Norton, said Martha. Arg cried Norton, apparently surprised to see another human being inside the antique doll museum. Oh, hi, Martha. Who's your little friend? I noticed he was holding an unopened bag of flavor wedges. His name's Sam, and he's interested in becoming a doll collector, said Martha. It's not just a hobby, but also an investment, said Norton to me. So I hear. I said. Norton tore open his flavor wedge bag and I felt something stir. Not in my heart, but in my backpack. Hamster Warsaurus Rex sensed junk food nearby. You're going to love Ginny Gossamer, said Norton, shoving a wedge into his mouth and crunching down. She's as delicate as a butterfly, wing made of snowflakes. Against my will, I flew three feet toward him. Backpack first. Norton blinked. Uh, hello again, I said. Hi, he said, taking an awkward step back. Come on, Sam. Up next is a really wonderful exhibit, said Martha. It's called Dolls of the 1800s, whose eyes seem to follow you. I turned to go as Norton bit down on another flavor wedge. Once again, Hamstersaurus Rex was flung me toward him. Sorry, I said. Is something wrong, Sam? asked Martha. Nope. Actually, come to think of it, I need to go to the bathroom, I said as I dashed off. Of course, the bathroom was doll themed. The paper towel dispenser was a giant porcelain clown face. I unzipped my backpack. Hamster Saurus Rex looked half crazy with hunger. Listen, dude, I said. You got to keep it together. You can't rampage. Not here. Not in front of Martha. Okay? Hamster Saurus Rex growled low and loudly. His pupils were fully dilated. His foot was twitching. What was it about junk food? Just then, I heard movement behind me. I zipped up my backpack and turned around. Was someone else in the bathroom? I checked under the doors of all the stalls but saw no feet. The freaky towel dispenser grinned at me from the corner. I shuddered and left. I found Martha on the second floor maison near the railing. Look at that, said Martha, admiring a grimy old doll with milky eyes under a glass case. She stepped from side to side. They really do follow you. Neat, I said, but I should probably get going. Wait, said Martha, crossing her arms. Sam, I think I know what's happening. I paused. You do? I was ready to run. Absolutely, she said. I saw how you kept lunging for Norton's food. I heard growling noises. You did? Sure, you're famished. I'm a little hungry too. Normally, I choose healthy snacks like fresh beets or dried beets, but there aren't any available. So I went to the first floor vending machine and got us some snacks. 
She reached into her purse and pulled out an array of pre-packaged junk food. Wait, I said. No, that's not what I... But she'd already torn open a bag of cheese wallets. A salty, artificial smell wafted towards me. I felt my backpack shudder. Stop, cried a voice from the shadows. Martha squinted towards the darkness. You might be new here, but if this is about eating in the museum, I have special permission, she said, pulling out a handwritten letter from the board of trustees. It was no doll museum security guard, however. Instead, it was Beaver Vanderkoff who stepped out from behind this display case. He was wild-eyed and filthy, like he hadn't bathed the whole time he'd been absent from school. Weirdest of all, he had several strands of whole garlic cloves hanging around his neck. So someone had been following me after all. Oh, said Martha, it's just you, Kiefer. Heed my words, Martha. You're not safe, said Beaver. I just heard Sam talking to himself in the bathroom mirror. He's trying to convince himself not to rampage. But then I heard him growl. Sam's a werewolf, and he wants to turn you into a werewolf just like him, Martha. He wants you to become his eternal wolf bride. Werewolves aren't real said Martha. Yes, they are, cried Beaver, putting himself between me and Martha. It's all right here. He held up the dog-eared werewolf issue of Pustule magazine. My backpack was shaking wildly now, whipping back and forth on my shoulders. Hamstersaurus Rex was going crazy in there. It's cool, Martha, I said, backing away. I'll just go. Sam, wait, you haven't even seen Jimmy, Jenny Gossamer yet. Be gone, foul beast creature, cried Beefer, waving a strand of garlic at me as he shoved Martha back. Garlic is for vampires, said Martha, not werewolves. Really? said Beefer, scratching his head. How can you not know that? Do you even read that magazine? she asked. I skimmed it, admitted Beefer. I started to run, but my backpack jerked me back then. Hamstersaurus Rex was losing control. Wait, Sam, said Martha, at least eat your cheese wallets. She shook the bag over her head behind Beaver. It was too much for Hamstersaurus Rex. He let out a thunderous dino roar. Oh no, cried Beaver, pointing out the window. The moon, the full moon rises. Sam is changing. The events of the new ten next two seconds seemed to happen in slow motion. Hamstersaurus Rex burst through my backpack. He actually tore a hamster-shaped hole right through the canvas like a cartoon. And I heard a high-pitched shriek. It wasn't Martha screaming, though. It was Beaver. A frenzied Hamstersaurus Rex hit the ground once and then leaped ten feet right at the bag of cheese wallets in Martha's hand. A startled beaver squealed, his garlic necklaces spinning around his neck. He stumbled backwards and then disappeared over the mezzanine railing. Here's a picture. Oh, oh wait, here we go. This cannot be good. There was an in, there was an instant. There was an instant of silence. Then I heard a crash below. I ran to the edge of the railing. On the first floor, Beaver lay on the ground on top of the remains of a splintered display stand. His eyes were wide open, staring at nothing. Beaver, are you dead? I cried. He blinked and sat up. Not dead. Oh no, came Norton's pained wail as he jogged toward Beaver on the floor below. He landed on Ginny Gossamer. He landed on Ginny Gossamer. Tears streamed from Norton's eyes as he stopped to pick up the single tiny doll arm. She was too fragile for this world, he whispered with a sob. Got him, cried Martha behind me. I turned. Martha Cherie had taken a bulletproof glass case off the milky-eyed doll and capped it over Hamstersaurus Rex, 
who was still devouring the last of the cheese wallets as he licked his lips. Mr. Soros Rex seemed to come to his senses. He looked around and realized that he was trapped. He charged at the glass. He, no effect. He roared, but the sound was weak and muffled. I saw the panic in his eyes. I can't believe it, said Martha, her eyes gleaming as eerily as any doll in the place. I finally captured Hamster Soros Rex. <gasps> Oof. And that's the end of our chapter. It's getting pretty good. I wonder what is going to happen next. All right, friends. Bye.